So it seems that basically Games Workshop have soft confirmed that the Emperor's Children are coming to Warhammer 40k, and from the language they're using it sounds like it's either late 10th edition, or possibly a launch faction for 11th. Let's talk about the rather interesting Chaos article that dropped today, the news and juicy hints that it brings, and the possibility of what's coming for the Sons of Solanesh. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Emperor's Children, and it's quite an exciting day if you're a Twisted Noise Marine enjoyer, as Games Workshop have basically given us a really big hint that strongly implies that the Emperor's Children Codex is coming, I'd guess in late 10th edition as the time for that. The update was this one, a really interesting Chaos Space Marine article that just dropped on Warhammer Community, and it's talking about the upcoming Chaos Space Marine Codex, something we haven't really got all that many actual articles about, rather than the big preview session that we got at Adepticon with the new Chaos Lords and things. Basically they were writing to set some expectations for the Chaos Codex, and why there might be some models missing from the lineup. Often that can be a big case with 10th edition codexes so far, things like Boss Zagstruck or Captain Badrock missing from the Orc Codex for example, and they were just models being retired until at some point Games Workshop decides to bring them back in plastic. This time though, for Lucius the Eternal and the Noise Marines it's a bit different, Apparently neither of them will be in the Chaos Codex, though it's not because they're necessarily being written out of the rules like some other things, it's instead because they're going to be treated as a separate army, and put in their own digital index as a placeholder, no doubt for something more exciting to come. The way that their rules will work is very similar to the World Eaters in the previous edition, basically when Codex Chaos Space Marine drops, they'll get their own free mini digital index, with datasheets that allow you to field them in the new detachments in Codex Chaos Space Marines, which isn't too far away now. This index will have keyword changes that denote how you should play an Emperor's Children army, basically mandating that you take Slanesh as the keyword for everything that can, and Lucius as the Warlord. Just on the hints of that, it sounds like it's more going to be a set of restrictions than a set of benefits, and probably isn't actually going to be very good in-game or anything like that in the interim. I don't know if there might be some minor peripheral benefits, it doesn't sound like there's going to be an actual Emperor's Children detachment in that book or anything like that, though I guess you might get some other things like maybe Battle Line Noise Marines might make sense. It's maybe not too dissimilar from the system that they have at the moment with the Lucius Warlord and Demon Allies of Slanesh and things like that. Otherwise though, they still say that Noise Marines aren't going away for the rest of the Chaos Space Marines, they're just going to be treated in the same way as things like say Corn Berserkers, Play Marines and Rupert Marines are, you can take forces of the Cult Marines sort of as allies to Codex Chaos Space Marines. They don't get the Dark Pacts and things, but they can still be interesting enough units to have in the army, perhaps Rupert Marines with the Warp Flamers in particular. Apparently this digital update will go live on Warhammer Community when the Chaos Codex drops, which I'd guess won't be too far away now given that it's billed for spring, though I'd guess we'll probably have the Tower release with the crew first, though I guess they could always surprise us and shake up the order there. Briefly, while we're on the subject of Chaos Space Marines, I thought I'd just quickly mention the Auspets Tactics channel giveaway. With that just around the corner, the May giveaway is going to be for both copies of the Battle Force box sets. Three winners will get those. Should be a good way to get a few players into Chaos, and if you're interested in that, then check out the end of the video where I'll talk through it a little bit more. Returning to the matter at hand though, this basically is quite a transparent thing that Games Workshop is doing here. They probably don't want to build too much hype for the Codex release at this point, as it sounds like it's a long way off, as we'll get onto, but we've absolutely seen this before with World Eaters in 9th edition 40k. They had the exact same pattern for the release. Codex Chaos Space Ruins came out a little bit later in the edition, and in that one it was notably missing the Corn Berserkers and Khan the Betrayer, them instead being covered by an Index Hereticus that came out in White Dwarf that had the Warlord traits and relics and the datasheets for those, so you could still field them in-game in the interim, when clearly there was more afoot. The reason they took them out was for neatness, they didn't really want to print the set of rules in Codex Chaos Space Marines, and then awkwardly have two sets of datasheets for things like Khan the Betrayer and Corn Berserkers, and then have them different in the World Eaters book, as they didn't really want to have to do some sort of errata to Codex Chaos Space Marines and just say that you can't field these units anymore, you have to use World Eaters. The exact same change of removing their iconic lore character and the Cult Marines from the Codex was followed less than a year later by the World Eaters Codex release, this one coming right at the very end of 9th edition, alongside the Arcs of Omen narrative and Demon Primarch Angron. It maybe was a bit annoying to see just how long the World Eaters players had to use their book before 10th edition rolled around quite quickly. 
Basically, though, we know from this move that the Emperor's children are indeed coming. There'd be no reason to take them out of Codex Chaos Space Marines if they weren't going to release the rules elsewhere. It just doesn't make sense to them to have unnecessary digital downloads. This one's really not any surprise or any sort of clever prediction as well. Emperor's Children is something that the entire fan base knows is coming at some point. It's just a question of when, not if. When I did a channel poll of new 40k armies to combat, the Emperor's Children were absolutely at the top of the list. They've done all the other cult marine legions and noise marines and Lucius have been waiting for an update for ages. We know that they're coming alongside the Primarch and it does also seem that they're the faction that people most want to see as well by that poll. Long overdue in updates and particularly in context of the other gods. There was a fair bit of speculation that the mystery codex in the summer could have potentially been Emperor's Children when it was first announced. Though I did feel like if they were launching a major range like that we probably would have heard about it a little bit earlier in advance. And now it's got to April, I feel like we would have at least heard something of a new army launch at this stage. In the same article, basically Games Workshop did guarantee that it's not going to be that mystery army it would seem. It sounds like it's not coming particularly soon. And they were really trying to set expectations in the article for giving us rough time horizons in their own way. Towards the end of the article, they have a bit of flavour text that says, You might think that this heralds a codex announcement, bound in human flesh and all sorts of other nastiness. But if that is the case, it's too distant to detect any signals yet, but if that changes, we'll let you know. Basically, they're trying to say that the codex isn't going to be coming just around the corner or anything like that, and they don't want Emperor's Children players just to be literally waiting on every single codex release and expecting the next one will be theirs. I'm sure we'll hear about them a fair way ahead of time when we do eventually get news of them. With that, and the past president of World Eaters, it seems very likely that they will be a late 10th edition launch like the World Eaters, and if that's so, then it could be almost two years before we get a codex for Emperor's Children from now. Editions in Warhammer 40k generally last for three years. World Eaters, I believe, came out in February with like about five months worth of the edition left to go. And if it really was about as maximally late as it can be in a Warhammer 40k edition, that means that we could still have around about one year, ten months to wait until an Emperor's Children codex surfaces. I'm not saying it definitely will be that long. Say, for example, if they were following the exact same timeline and calendar, and we got a more timing similar to the Leagues of Votan army book, you might have a year or so's worth of playing with the Emperor's Children Codex before any edition changes. I guess another possibility could be that it could be the launch faction for 11th edition. They did do exactly this in the not-too-distant past with the Death Guard in the launch of 8th edition alongside the Primaris. So personally, I guess that this will be less likely given that the rules are being removed now. If they were launching them at the start of 11th edition, I'm not sure they necessarily need to write them out of the Chaos Codex at this point, though I guess it's still a possibility. Either way, for expectations for that, I'd guess 11th edition is far less likely to be a hard reset like the change from 9th to 10th edition was, maybe more akin to a big core rules update, similar to the change that we had from 8th edition to 9th edition. Rewriting the core book, changing a lot of points costs, and likely releasing some core new miniatures, but not actually deleting all the codexes in the game and replacing them with indexes. In any case, pretty exciting times for Emperor's Children players, I think. At least knowing that they are coming at some point on the time horizon is not the worst in the world. Seems like there's a very good chance they will be within the next three years at the maximum sort of time horizon, and could be considerably sooner. It's maybe not too hard to predict a few safe bets for their ranged launch as well, i will certainly get a new Fulgrim similar to the transfigured version from Heresy. It'll be interesting to see the design changes they make between that. We'd absolutely get new Noise Marines and a new Lucius the Eternal. Both of those are long, long overdue an update now. And I guess otherwise the other possibilities could be new Terminators similar to the Heresy ones perhaps. Raised Cultists of some sort. Zine's got their Zangors, World Eaters, their Jackals and Death Guard their Poxwalkers so it's unlikely that Slaanesh won't get their own flavour. I suspect we'll get some Lords and generic support characters, similar to Death Guard slash World Eaters. World Eaters, I feel like we've only seen about half their range so far, so probably a lot more to come on that front. And otherwise, perhaps less likely bets could be things like Demon Engines, a possessed alternative maybe similar to 8 Bound, or maybe a unique Dreadnought or Hellbrood I think could be quite fun, maybe doing a Sonic Dreadnought or similar to that. I feel like that could be a crowd pleaser. In any case though, let me know your thoughts as to the news and the expectations for the Emperor's Children. Look forward to hearing your thoughts down in the comments. Finally, as mentioned, with the news of Chaos in the Air, I thought I might just talk about the Auspex Tactics giveaway for the Chaos Battle Forces in May. There are two big exciting box sets in the Dread Talons and the Veterans of the Long War. Dread Talons being Raptors, Cultists and the new Jump Pack Lord. 
the veterans being the Lord on foot, lots of Terminators, Legionaries, Possessed and Chosen. Between the two could be a pretty fun way of getting a core Chaos Space Marine army off the ground. And as per always with the channel giveaways, there's two different ways to enter, supporting via the channel's Patreon page for any amount, or on social media for free. The channel's Patreon is the main thing that allows me to keep on making videos like this each month, so if you are enjoying any support is hugely appreciated, that gets you automatic entry each month. So you can absolutely equally support via social media completely for free, subscribe to the YouTube channel and like the Facebook page to help out those algorithms, and then to enter the draw you respond to the Facebook post that will appear on the 1st of May, it's a clearly marked giveaway post, and you respond to that with a photo of any 40k mini or imagery, along with your name and the date handwritten within the same photo. The last bit is just to deter Facebook bots and spammers, and allow the prizes to go to real people. Then after 24 hours after that turns up, I collect all the entries, put them into a random number generator, and that picks out the three giveaway winners for this one. Everyone gets one chance equally, and the results get announced on the channel update video on YouTube around about the 4th of May. The boxes will be sent out when I receive my orders for them, depending on exactly when Games Workshop gets around to releasing and shipping these. In any case, check out the links down in the video description to either the Patreon or the Facebook page if you'd be interested in entering for this. I'll certainly keep similar sort of things coming pretty much each and every month. In any case though, pretty big news as it goes, pretty much soft confirmation of a new faction coming for 40k. Look forward to hearing all your thoughts down in the comments. Feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics if you'd like to see more news updates like this. I do tend to keep 40k videos coming just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.